First things first is Dave Chappelle. So, like I said, the Kanye tree has bore off many fruit. We got the Kyrie conversations now. We got the the, the Dave Chappelle conversation, you know, after his SNL monologue happened this week. So if you watch the monologue, you would just think that Dave Chappelle was doing his thing as a comedian, right? That's why. That's why I thought. I was like, oh, harmless jokes. He's joking a little about Kanye. He's joking a little about Kyrie. He's bringing up things about Hollywood and Jewish people, and you know, um, you think it's lighthearted. It's all good, but. Now that I believe Dave Chappelle is a, well, I don't think, but, you know, he's been made to be looked at as this poisonous character, this evil character, this low moral character. People are just so easily susceptible to jumping on him at any turn. So now the ADL, which is, I like I said, the NAACP for Jewish people, they've come out and they've, you know, standing against Dave Chappelle, calling him anti-Semite, saying that NBC is allowing, uh, softening of anti-Semitism to be spread on their channel. So they're just, once again, going to the anti-Semitism thing. But if you listen to it as a normal person who doesn't really know too much information about Jewish and this, that, you'll just think he's just making jokes. Just making lighthearted jokes. He's saying, you know, hey, if you're in Hollywood and you know, because Dave Chappelle's obviously been in Hollywood, there are a lot of Jews. But did they miss the part where he said, there's a lot of Jews in Hollywood, but there's also a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri. That don't mean black people run shit, right? So he's doing the, you know, saying, oh, there's a lot of Jews, but that, that don't mean they run shit. So he's doing the, the kind of double hop stepping thing. But what in that statement is anti-Semitic? And even at the end when he jokes, hopefully I didn't say nothing crazy here so they won't cancel me, you jump, like you feed the bait every single time. And I believe that, you know, maybe Jonathan Greenblatt, the ADL, other, you know, verified Jewish people that are on Twitter that are mad about this, are talking, I feel like they think they're doing something good. But in my opinion, <clears throat> They're only making it worse for themselves because it starts to feel like you're just jumping on anything to have an issue with anything. Like I would think if he was outright saying like, man, Kanye was right. These do run shit that they were, they're the reason I had to go to Africa. They were stealing from me. They was greedy. Like you would have thought he was doing the same shit like that. Was a comedian taking this observation of a situation, observation of the world and comedicizing it. But then now, is this a group that can't be joked about? Is this a group that can't even be spoken on? You're only, whatever stereotypes you think they're feeding into, your response ultimately feeds back into that. When a guy says, oh, you can't speak about Jewish people, and then when a guy does, and he gets immediately labeled anti-Semite, da, 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 like this, the average person says, okay, y'all saying that isn't true, but then it happens, so what's the truth? So I just want to read a couple of the <clears throat> responses to it, right? So John the Greenblatt said, which is really a slight towards Dave, which is like, I don't know if John Greenblatt knows Dave, but we're not going to act like Dave Chappelle's a bad guy because he joked about trans. Like, we're not, not going to act like a comedian's a bad guy for doing jokes and doing social commentary and comparing to people who actually hate these people. Because that's where y'all get it misconstrued. That's where y'all get the, 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 the wires don't cross and connect. Y'all got, this guy is a, a transphobic person. The same thing as a guy who says, like, you know, you guys should go to hell. Like, I, I just can't put these people in the same box. Same, the same way I feel about racism. Everything's not racist. A white person is commented on black culture. A white person says something about a black person. It'll it, immediately they'll be labeled as racist. And all you do with those terms is make them smaller and smaller and smaller until they really, in everybody's mind, don't mean shit. So, John the Greenblatt he said, "We shouldn't expect Dave Chappelle to serve as society's moral compass, but disturbing to see S, uh, NBC not just normalize but popularize anti. So like they're popularizing anti-Semitism." If anybody, like if you watch it, if you watch that thing, what did he popularize by anti-Semitism? He said there's a lot of Jews in Hollywood. Jews would tell you there's a lot of Jews in Hollywood. What does he say? He said the the you know they who, who hopefully they don't get me, which is referring to Kanye not just saying it, and then they're hanging on to the thing that he said, which a lot of people on Twitter are hanging on to this phrase that he said. He said, "You broke the one rule of Hollywood, right? And everything is about perception." If they're black, it's a gang. If they're Italian, it's a mob. And if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence. And you should never talk about it. But by green black continually getting upset and up in arms every time somebody says, says something about the Jewish community, thinking like it's like they think anytime somebody says something about the Jewish community, that's going to ultimately end in a very violent attack on Jewish people because it has happened in the past. But Dave Chappelle isn't the same as these white supremacists that y'all track online. Because if you go to ADL's website, they have like these 
people that they got labeled white supremacists or this or anti-Semite or uh, anti-Israel. They, they have a long list of people. Dave Chappelle's comedy is nowhere in line with these things. And nobody listens to SNL monologues. I'm like, you know what? I'm about to go to war with the Jews. Like, nobody's doing that. So, like I said, they make it to where people start looking at it kind of weird. Like, if you go on social media, most people love the love the monologue. And I'm not even putting this on all Jewish people because I'm, I always, I'm always the person who says, when you see the loudest people on social media from certain groups, I tend to believe that the majority of that group does not really align with that person. If I was to go and ask Jewish people, like regular everyday Jewish people, hey, how do you feel about Dave Chappelle monologue? I can, I, I'll assume that most of them do not have a problem with it. Do not have fear that Dave Chappelle just incited a new generation and NBC just popular. I, I would assume that that is the case because it seems so normal, so lighthearted. I believe comedians should be joking about anything, anybody. But obviously when it comes to them, you know, and when I say them, I don't mean all Jewish people. I mean the ADL. When it comes to them and their message and their whatever their mission statement is for Jewish people, any kind of commentary about them is met with immediate anti-Semitism allegations on your name. Now, I listened to Charlamagne the guy this morning speak about it on Breakfast Club, and he was saying, I think they're kind of going about it wrong. I think instead of just labeling somebody something, how would you explain why you're saying they are what they are? Because like I said, to most people, they'll look at like, what did he say that was bad? He said there's a bunch of Jewish people in Hollywood, which you could look up and see. I, I pulled up on stream the other day about music industry and who started what labels are they? You can just look it up on Wikipedia. It's going to have a full length list of people in high up places. But does that mean they're evil? Or am I just saying that there's a lot of this disproportionately to the society in this? So another person named uh, Ben Freeman, he's like a, he's a Twitter guy too. He, he has a book like called like taking back our Jewish ideas, something like that. He's actually Dave Chappelle. If a black person is anti-Jewish, as you have been, which like I said, I didn't I didn't see clear anti-Jewish sentiment, not jokes. I'm so tired of that. Anybody, it's like the same thing with the trans thing, and I'll say it with everybody, with black people, anybody. When somebody just says something about you that they're not a part of that society or that whatever, it is not racism, transphobia, homophobia, homophobia Islam, whatever, whatever. If it's just a critique, a criticism, or a joke that is just rooted in the actual truth, not just some like vain shit that they just, you know, oh, all black people are evil because it's blah, 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 whatever. Or all Jewish people are bad because whatever. And no, I'm not, I'm not trying to hear, hear that. He said, then we will hold them responsible for the harm they've caused. Your blackness does not preclude you from anti-Jewish racism. Stop allowing Jew hate to fester. Another person said, Dave Chappelle getting on national television saying Kanye is right. There are a lot of Jews in Hollywood. It's so terrifying. Look how, look how they leave out the entire context. They'll leave out the entire context of that com or not even that conversation, that, that, that set, that 15 minute monologue, and she'll say, he said Kanye's right, there's a lot of Jews. But then you all, you, so you're gonna leave off the back end part. You'll say that, oh, he said Kanye's right about the Jews being in Hollywood, but you'll miss the part where he said there's also a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri, but that don't mean black people run shit, which would be saying, yeah, there's a lot of Jews in Hollywood, but that don't mean they run shit. So it's so terrifying. Right. And not funny at all. Shame on NBC S enough for giving this man a platform for spewing this anti-Semitic bullshit. It's like, it's like it, 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 it begins to feel like the boy that cried wolf. That's what it begins to feel like. If there, like I said, if there's a guy out there really spewing anti-Jewish shit, like, hey, we need to bring back the, hit, the youth and we need to do this and do that. And you know what I'm saying? Or it don't got to be that extreme. We just be like, say, I, you know, I think they're going to come in here and they're coming to spread evilness into society and take. I can see why you be mad at that. But not a guy joking, and then you're going to take the jokes out of context. You think people are going to jump onto your side on some victim shit? No, sir. No way. No, man. No, no, no. How? No, we ain't stand, no, we ain't standing for that no more. There got to be some real legit shit. And they said, ain't just the ADS just that we're kind of focused on the Jewish conversation right now. That goes for anybody. And Candace Owens, even though, you know, she got her, her own Dave Chappelle shit, she kind of, you know, she was on Dave's side. She said, Jordan Peterson once said, if it persecutes the jester, it's probably a tyrant. Pay attention to who, if anyone calls for Dave Chappelle to be canceled over his monologue last night. It was layered and hilarious. Comedy is protected space in a free society. And like I said, once again, 
every time people waiting, it seemed like Jonathan Greenblatt and ADL, they take the bait. And I feel like they think in the public eye because maybe they look at the lens of the world through Twitter. They think that they're doing a great job. They think that their message is being reciprocated and people are going against Dave Chappelle. But in the grand scheme of things, most people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're confused. They're confused why you're so upset about what he said. So then they got... You know, people writing articles, people doing all these type of things. We got an article from The Atlantic. Does Dave Chappelle find anything funnier than being canceled? So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but, you know, uh, he said, early in my career, I learned there were two words in the English language that should never be in, in the same sequence, he said, which is the Jews. He said, I've never heard someone do good after they said that. He then launched to a lacerating summary of Ye's recent meltdown and the rapid destruction of his reputation. He had broken the show business rules. You know the rules of perception. If they're black, it's a gang. If they're Italian, it's a mob. But if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence you never speak about it. Chappelle deadpan and offering one of those impish grins. So he's very critical of Dave Chappelle. Just if you read, you gotta go read the article yourself. It's from the Atlantic, from a guy named uh, David Sims. Like I said, it's called "Does Dave Chappelle Find Anything Funnier Than Being Canceled?" But that the Jewish community take that as a slight of him saying, "No, it's a black, it's a gang. If it's Italian, it's a mob. If it's Jews, it's just a coincidence." It's because if you call something out that it was done by a couple of Jewish people, and you say, "Hey, look at these Jewish people did." It's a no-no. But if you look at this group of what black people did, oh, they're a gang. Oh, they're, t- they're a mob. Or the Irish, they're a mob. They're, you know, it's like these things. Or Mexicans, oh, that's the cartel. Or that's a, you know, It's like these things. It don't got to be nothing super evil either. It don't gotta, I'm not saying it's got to be like, you know, selling crack and cocaine and killing multiple people and whatever, whatever like that. But I'm just saying to the regular, I'm just speaking to the regular person. When the regular people look at this and sees, they're like, what's the issue? Because a lot of people, let's be honest, a lot of people are ignorant to how Germany became what it was. People are ignorant to how a country was able to imprison and um, kill millions of people. They don't really know the rhetoric he used. They don't know the propaganda that he used. So whenever the normal person sees that, oh, you're mad because they said y'all are running industry? Oh, 21 Savage got in trouble because he said I'm getting Jewish money? Oh, you're mad because people, like the stereotypes about your group are of stereotypes of success. Now, like I said, I know what Hillary did to whatever, but to the normal person, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with that? So instead of saying you're anti-Semitic, say We're, we don't like this because X, Y, and Z, because you know, a, this was used as a propaganda tool to convince the people of this, that we were this and evil. And then that's why 6 million Jews were killed. In the- like, do it like that. I know you probably got it all over their website. They probably got all the links, the stories, and the. Well, I get it. But when you're on Twitter just tweeting, it's not going to go over well. So uh, the guy went on. He says Chappelle's ostensibly uh, ostensible point in his 15 minute monologue was sometimes hard to grasp, as he tiptoed up to the stereotypes Jay perpetuated and then gave them some half-hearted deflation. I've been in Hollywood. This is what I saw. It's a lot of Jews, like a lot. Chappelle chuckled, but it doesn't mean anything. That's like black people in Ferguson. Doesn't mean they run the place. Jay's biggest mistake he kept pointing out was a PR one. I can see if you had some kind of issue, you might go out to Hollywood and your mind might start connecting some dots and you could maybe adopt the delusion that the Jews are running show business. It's not a crazy thing to think, but it's a crazy thing to say out loud at a time like this. He said, running his back and cackling. So even with that, even with that sentiment and even with that statement, it's not hard to connect dots and it's not hard to, to do those things because you can go anywhere and see something happening, right? You can go any, any any industry, you can go somewhere and see something happening. And if everything that's happening to you happened to be from a certain group of people, you would begin to believe that that group of people run X, Y, and Z. If you go here, you can't get a tour because a Jewish guy runs a tour. Go here, get your manager. It's like you will start to try to connect the dots. That's not something unfathomable. That is just your anecdotal experience in Hollywood. Maybe everybody in Hollywood didn't go through Jewish manager, Jewish lawyer, Jewish head of a thing, Jewish director. Like maybe they didn't do that. So everybody might have different experiences when it comes to Hollywood. But I'm not going to discredit somebody's anecdotal experience when they went through that. Now, like I said, you can't broad brush it to everybody else, but in today's society, that's how it goes. So, you know, I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not canceling Dave Chappelle. We got the picture of Dave in the back. I, I think, you know, he's a comedian. He's just speaking his mind to what he does. I think that a lot of times in society, we try to hold people accountable for speaking about these quote unquote marginalized groups that cannot be spoken about. And when they do, they're just so evil. They're rat nasty, they're raw. They're going to create violence and hate and, and murder towards these people. And I just don't see that happening at all. There's another guy named uh, Rudy Roachman. 
right? He has a verified on social media. He went on like a probably like a five tweet rant about the Dave Spill thing. I just want to I just want to hear what people got to say about. It. So he says, Dave Spill's SNL skip was a meticulous and calculated move to desensitize the population from anti-Semitism. So it's like it's a it's a see the thing is like they don't want people to be perpetuate evil on to you know them, but they they'll they'll make they will pretty much I would essentially say defame Dave Chappelle and act like his motive was to desensitize anti-Semitism, make anti-Semitism, you know, acceptable in American mainstream comedy, social life, whatever. That's a pretty much what this guy is alluding to. Because when you say that Dave Chappelle skit was meticulously and calculated, that's like saying someone was, you know, calculated in this murder. They planned it. They knew what they were doing. And they knew once they, you know, they, they went through with the plan, murder was going to happen. So the, his thing is Dave Chappelle meant to desensitize, desensitize the population from anti-Semitism, which is to me is saying that essentially Dave Chappelle is an evil person. So getting society to laugh at Jewish trauma struggles and normalizing historic tropes by manipulating the average person's pain and redirecting their reactions onto Jews, which to me is like so overblown in what you actually listen to what Dave Chappelle's saying. Then he goes on to say, this is one of the earlier steps, but the stage is complete. The attacks evolved from verbal to physical, which is saying like Dave Chappelle's speech and his rhetoric is going to, you know, just cause this uprising. Now it went from verbal attacks of Jewish people to now it's going to go to physical. Yes, that's happened in the past, but if you think that Dave Chappelle and his SNL monologue is going to mobilize a mass amount of people to start ja- attacking Jewish people, it's not going to happen. The people that already don't like Jewish people who heard Dave Chappelle was probably already thinking about it. Those people, like we can all agree on, are most likely evil people. But we can all agree on it. So for him to act like Dave Chappelle's monologue is going to just Causes this big wave, this big uproar. I just don't see it. So uh, then from individual to institutional, so this is going to go from, you know, the people uh, messing over Jewish people to now the institutions will start to mess over Jewish people. And because most will already be desensitized, the world will watch and do nothing. So essentially he's saying whatever happened, essentially what happened in Germany will once again take place again because we're already so desensitized to anti-Semitism. Whatever happens to them, we won't give a fuck. We won't stand up for their rights. I don't know the fucking Uyghurs. I talk about the Uyghurs. If they start trying to throw Jews in internment camps, and I saw that there was really a lot of like, like an overwhelming amount of Jewish hate just like spurring up out of nowhere, I would speak out against that because I don't think that anybody should be persecuted based on whatever. Wake up, wake up, wake up. That's what that's what he said. History is repeating, but it doesn't have to repeat. When Jews were are united and empowered, they have always overcome the grace of enemy civilizations. Or struggles. Look how, look how like massive this guy is making this. These cup like the Kanye to Dave to this. Like I don't know if he thinks like black people are gonna like link up with white supremacists and we're gonna like merge together and form into like a super anti-Jewish coalition that's get, then gonna be able to convince the government of the United States to then get the Jews that are you know that are all over the America and then put. Like, I don't know what he thinks is about to happen, but. I could probably predict that what he's narrating and what he is alluding to is most likely not about to happen. That mo- most likely that's not about to happen. So when Jews were are divided and assimilated, history repeats an outcome far too familiar. Now, if we take a step back, the metaphysical root of this irrational and illogical hatred and age-old rejection of the Jewish people has always stemmed not only from the nation of Israel having the potential to, but also having chosen the responsibility to, be, to, to heal the world. So his, his rhetoric is that people, the, the Jewish hatred comes from people being mad that the nation of Israel has the potential to heal the world, which... I'm not polling anybody, but I don't know if that's the reason why. Um, I'm sure there's people that don't like Jews because of the nation of Israel, but like I'm not saying, I think overwhelmingly people are, you know, because they're going to heal the world. People are, I don't know. So I know many don't want to face that responsibility and want to believe the world will come running to save the Jews or that we can just blend in and be like everyone else, but we can't. Jews chose to accept the responsibility and mission statement of, and I'm going to slaughter this, but uh, Takun Alam and to be or la goyim, which means to be a light onto others and to heal every problem in this world. If the world was a body, what organ or function would they play? So essentially he's saying the Jews are the immune system of the world, and they're here to heal the world from, you know, I guess whatever's going on in the world. 
Jews chose to accept the responsibility of mission statement of Tikkun Olam and to be or Lagoim, which means uh, the same thing. So they just, I don't know why they were posting that three times in a row, but that, that's, that, it's like, it's an extra shit. Like, bro, the average person looks at it as extra. That, Dave Chappelle's monologue, because that's off the back, that speech comes off the back of a Dave Chappelle monologue. For him to say that Dave Chappelle meticulously and calculated is popularizing the desensitization of anti-Semitism in America, or maybe he's even talking about the world, and to say that, well, look what they're doing here. His statements are eventually going to have it to where institutionally they're going to start discriminating against Jews. And when that happens, everybody's going to be so, you know, desensitized to anti-Semitism that they're not going to care if they start throwing us back into the camps. Which I think is an outrageous statement to make. Doesn't America and Israel have like a great relationship? You think if people started really going in there trying to destroy Israel, America wouldn't step in? Because of a Dave Chappelle monologue or a Kanye West thing or the Kyrie's hitting a speech about or, or sending a link about Hebrews and Negro? Like, what? It's just crazy. And like I said, it just looked like the boy that cried wolf because we know that ain't about to happen, man. Come. Now I'm not saying that there won't be like, you know, people writing shows, synagogues and doing this and doing that. I'm not saying that won't happen. But it happens to every, and it's not okay, but it happens to every marginalized group, every discriminated against group. Every, they all get it. Like I said, when I read, when I was reading, and I got John the Greenback's book, and I've been reading it, when he said that when I saw that that tree life of synagogue shooting happened, I realized if it could happen to Jews, it could happen to anybody. I'm like, it took you to that to happen to happen? Didn't Dylan Ruth sit in the church three years before that and kill nine black people in their church? What do you mean? It makes you feel like you're completely out of touch to other, my, you, you speak that minority shit, but it seemed like you got to touch the other minority issues. Even when you speak with Nick Cannon and Nick Cannon brought up buck breaking and he didn't even know what buck breaking meant, but you expect everybody to know every anti-Semitic trope, every day. Come on, my brother. You can't, you can't believe that. You can't think that. When we talked about, I don't even know how, how in depth, I don't even remember how in depth we were talking about the Holocaust in school. I think we just taught like it happened. We, we were taught like, Hey, look, here's uh Hitler's leader of propaganda. And this is what he said to get these people. And this is what he did. And like, no. So, I'm off of that. You know, that's, it is what it is. You get canceled, do what you got to do. That's whatever. So 